In this video, I'm genuinely excited to be testing a Vauxhall Zafira, one of the earliest known examples in the UK. So the Vauxhall Zafira, uh, before we start, a bit of housekeeping, uh, this road doesn't go anywhere so I'm not blocking, I'm not actually as parked in the middle of the road as it looks, this is a favourite test spot of mine. Um, this is a 1999 Vauxhall Zafira, it was a car launched in April 1999, this example on a T-plate here was registered in um, June of 1999, shortly before my day in Matiz, in fact, so this is all feeling beautifully retro today. And the Zafira was very much um, General Motors' answer to the Renault Megane Scenic, which began this mini MPV market sector. It wasn't the first small MPV, we can probably credit Fiat with that, with the original Fiat 600 multipler, but uh, it spawned, the Renault Megane spawned a whole host of copycats, and for my money, the Zafira is the best one. For a start, I think the styling is wonderful. I think the Megane Scenic looks a bit too much like an inflated Megane. And while you can see clear links to the um, Astra G ancestry of the Zafira, uh, I think it just comes, it is more wholesome. It's a purer one box design. Uh, I think Vauxhall were on a real high at this stage. I really like the Astra um, G as well. I will just apologise quickly to all the um, uh, Europeans following who would obviously be more used to this being an Opal rather than a Vauxhall. I will use Vauxhall just because um, that's the brand I'm used to here in the UK. Obviously all the development, the build of this car, all done in Germany. So there's nothing British about it other than Vauxhall as a brand. But yeah, re really nice styling and uh, innovative as well because the Zafira was the first mini MPV to have seven seats, which we'll get to in a moment. We'll do a full look at that. Um, under the bonnet of this example, we've got the Mir 1.6. Uh, it's the old Family One overhead cam engine. We'll have a look at that in a moment. The, the specification of this one is comfort, which is one up from the base club. Um, we'll have a look at what that gets you. We've got some lovely dealer fit headlamp protectors going on, the original dealer number plates as well, Evans Halshaw. In this case, I worked for them briefly myself, Evan Pelshaw. I like the rear lights. This was a particular high point for rear light design, I think, because even at a glance, uh, you know where the signal is going to come from. You can see that this is an indicator, even when it's not flashing. You can see that one of these reds, if it comes on, probably means the car is slowing down. Uh, I don't like modern cars where they hide lighting functions. Uh, it's just a personal bugbear. We've got um, a rear wiper and a high-level brake light. Uh, the wiper only clears half of the high-level brake light. It might have been neater to somehow make it wipe all of it, but nonetheless, um, it's something you can do. Let's jump aboard. Or should we have a look at the engine first? Uh, let's go engine. A bonnet pull on a Vauxhall, usually about here somewhere. There we go. We'll have a look at the engine. The 1.6 was the smallest. Uh, oh, look at that little tag pulls out the bonnet to release that catch so you can then lift the bonnet here we go it's called ecotech but um yeah i think it is very much um, a reworking of the earlier sort of Vauxhall engines uh, i'm not sure a number of camshafts or anything it looks like it might have two camshafts but of course this is the era where you cover everything up other than the oil filler cap so you can't really see a lot of what is going on it does have air conditioning so that's a good thing. It doesn't work all that well, so that's a bad thing. And you'll note, now we're under here, clap hand wipers, albeit fitted in this case with later aero blades, of which I'm not an enormous fan. Uh, we shall go and have a look inside. Uh, this car. I, I love the colour. The colour is fantastic. And I love all the black trim, the way it breaks up the sides. Uh, real, th this is my era. I like this very much. Uh, so doors open nice and wide, very easy to clamber aboard, very firm seats because Vauxhall, stroke opal, um, but they seem comfortable on the short experience I've had so far. Oddment trays and pockets all over the place. We jump in, it's exactly what you'd expect to see uh, in a Vauxhall Astra. It's just a higher driving position. You note the seat base is further from the floor. That helps you cram more people into um, a shorter space. I think we're only a couple of inches longer than an Astra Mark IV estate um, or wagon. And uh, yeah, it, it's all very familiar, but a bit more upright, a really nice driving position, really nice view rearward, nice and clear at the rear window. 
and uh, one upgrade we do have a cd player fitted this would have had a cassette uh, originally but it is correct for the car it is a voxel head unit which um includes this little display area up there um indicators it's quite a quiet indicator noise but it is there um not much in the way of toys this has been a fairly lowly spec but still we've got radio buttons uh, on the uh, and the menu controls on the uh, steering wheels so that's quite nice uh, the gear lever sits quite low and it's quite a, a stubby little affair again very voxel and i quite like it um it sits a little um, lower than perhaps i'm entirely comfortable with but it's good and the handbrake is down here and works much as you'd expect seatbelt pretensioners so they will tighten in the case um, of an accident airbags will explode in your face as well a very very voxel um, interior light here it hasn't got the separate map functions that's what these panels are for on the higher spec models these would have map reading lights uh, we've got little sun visors as well grab handles but don't seem to have any cushioning uh, so yeah it's, it's just simple and effective uh, window switches and mirror switches are out on the door and that fall nicely to hand and very voxel to have the um, interior light switch here you pull out for the interior light if the door's shut uh, no front fogs rear fog lights we've got we can adjust dashboard illumination and headlamp height thusly the column stalks again very very voxel of this era and uh, they're probably a bit of a letdown interesting fact is tvr repurposed these stalks for the tvr griffith and chimera so you got the same rubber boot but they changed the plastic bit here for a bit piece of aluminium they did have these stalks just lifted straight out of a voxel originally there is a horn and it's a good horn uh, but that's about it we've got aftermarket parking sensors fitted cigarette lighter 12 volt power outlet as we call it these days and um, that's about it for the front so just have a look in there oh yeah you can get all sorts of stuff in there so that's a decent sized glove box and an ashtray with a pencil i fully approve and it looks like a dog has sharpened that pencil excellent and one pound here which i will leave because i'm an honest person there is height adjustment on my seat as well which i can control with that lever um, well, i'm not going to at the moment right we should jump into the rear and see how that compares uh, again the doors open nice and wide but you'll see this lowly spec of the comfort um, we've got keep fit windows how low do they go oh that's a good opening so they, they rate highly there and i've been driving along with the windows open and it's very comfortable as well uh, it doesn't seem to suffer buffering too much a uh, tiny little ashtray there oh yeah little baby ashtray oh but you'll see loads of leg room that can be changed uh, you can uh, pull this lever here and slide the whole bench forward um, to increase load space or obviously you can fold the seats down in various ways uh, there's an awful lot you can do that also allows access to the rear seats which we're going to get to any moment there but we'll have that in the rearward position and i shall jump in and uh has to be said the rear bench is extra firm uh, i think it's uh, almost uncomfortable but we've still got a little center armrest nice bit of engineering in that uh ski hatch so you can reach through to stuff in the boot or apparently not if you've got that too open uh, that's quite handy uh, but yeah overall impression is it's just a bit firm for comfort i have ridden in the back of a zephira before uh, but you know loads of headroom loads of knee room haven't got my shorts on so you're okay today uh, it's uh, quite spacious but let's have a look at how the um, flex 7 seating system works it's one of the um, highlight figures of these cars and i think it was developed with assistance from porsche uh, worth remembering porsche is a design consultancy as well as a car manufacturer so we will first of all come around to the back nice simple button to open which is good on a family car you don't want to have to use the keys or an interior release necessarily you just want a button for it works uh, we've got a load cover which um, retracts thusly and can then be withdrawn entirely i believe by squeezing that um, some things are easier done with two hands there we go now one issue is uh, once you've removed this cover there is nowhere for it to go in the car so temporarily we're going to apply it to the rear seats just to get it out of the way and uh, now the real cleverness begins because we lift this cover 
and uh, oh no they'll keep the, my foot on that bit and it folds up and sits here on the boot floor or obviously you can just withdraw the whole thing entirely and then we get the rear seats which if we pull i haven't slid the bench forward enough uh, this happened when i went to actually see one of these in a dealership so this doesn't surprise me at all it's probably because i've got my bag in front of the seat there we go right i'm leaving all this in because it does demonstrate how things have to be absolutely perfect for this to work correctly now i should be able to pull this the seat comes out pivots up and then slides forward look at the engineering in this and then just a click oh, we just missed the um bit at the back so that wasn't so good after all uh, we fold the seat down there we go locks in on that pin we have all these hinges here and uh, we'll see if we can do a more competent demonstration of the other side so up it comes seat goes down locks in at the bottom locks in at the top let's go and see what that's like for comfort uh, we can tilt the seat out of the way jump aboard and uh, yeah th these are definitely child only seats uh, it's all a bit compact my knees are some way from the seat base and uh, i think these head restraints will go up so you could put an adult here but i think by the time you slid this bench back to a sensible level it's going to be very tight here however i have got some blanking plugs to play with a little cup holder a little cubby for my gadgets and there may even have been some toys here on higher spec models just taking the novel height adjustment on the seat belt that's a nice feature so rear seats very much emergency use only but they are there as an option and, and they are clever i think it's a very nice system he says trying to get out of the back of the car right we should fold these seats away again uh, i'm gonna have to there we go use my head that's down so we just push the button seat starts going down pull the handle up she comes down she goes slides under there and i forgot the seat belt buckles lie under here so they're tucked out of the way again a lovely little feature there's a lot of thought gone into this car and i always admire that and then we'll pull that up again and then that one goes down drops a good one throw the carpet across and then we can slide the bench back and all the good times can begin i uh, can't do it with that there beautiful uh what else have we got here we've got little cubbies here kind of interested to know what's in here oh we've got um a rear seat belt is in there and uh, some bungee cords and a tin of no doubt useful things so a bit of extra stowage space hidden in there over the other side we apparently have a, a first aid kit and there it is and uh, might have to have a look at that a tow rope also a feature in here oh there we go genuine voxel first aid kit i'm guessing this probably isn't in the first flush of youth to be honest i might not want to use anything in here but there we go all mod cons that's nice to see an original period feature and uh, this car is owned by some friends of mine now very much of the preservation mindset they own the maxi of a previous video uh, but i wanted to drive this for a while actually because i've known they've had it and uh, they've had it some 18 years i think so quite a long period of time all right we shall uh, fold this seat back and then get you set up for the purposes of a test drive naturally we'll also do some wiper testing so we've got little grab handles in there for the boot lovely oh i will just add it looks like we've got separate lumbar support adjustment that's something unexpected on a lowly spec model so not a particularly inspiring noise but wipers now the jets need a bit of redirection because we've got some dribbling going on here but see the problem with a clap hand design is you get this um triangle of, I, I don't want to call it triangle of doom because it shouldn't dribble like that it's only doing that because the jets are doing it but certainly it's inattention in the middle of the windscreen and sometimes it's hidden behind the interior mirror on cars on this one not so much but still gotta love clap hand wipers i certainly do uh, rear wiper 
Tests should also be conducted. Push the stalk away. There we go. Rear wiper blade perhaps not in the best of condition. Situation normal. And problem with the um, having the jet at the top is you're going to get dribbles like that. And it's still on an intermittent setting at the moment. So a, a little bit of disappointment there. We've got dribbles in all kinds of places. I have got a mist function where I can just lift for a wipe. So that's good. But uh, we really need to get moving. So let's do that. Feels quite perky, I think. Uh, but obviously, that's only with me aboard. I imagine with... Um... I imagine with more people aboard, it's going to feel uh, very sluggish, especially on hills. But it actually feels quite smooth, very torquey. Uh, this example seems to have a slight exhaust boom, so I think maybe um, something's a little below par in that department. But uh, it's really peaceful and uh, feels actually very pleasant. This being based on the Astra G means the handling is uh, really rather good. I think everyone goes crazy about the uh, Mark 1 Ford Focus, but for my money, an Astra G is no bad car at all. I think they're very stylish, uh, they handle well, they drive well, and this is no different. It's perhaps a little revvy with a 1.6. We're doing 3,000 revs at 60 miles an hour. Uh, or 100 kilometers an hour near enough um, so maybe that's not that peaceful but I can't really hear the engine and I think for my money I would go for a petrol engine over the diesel the diesels are prone to a little complication it can be uh, a troublesome engine the diesel and I think for sheer simplicity uh, I don't think the petrols are going to hit you in the wallet that much harder than the diesels, to be honest. Brakes feel a little dead, but it could be because this is a slightly older example now. 74,000 miles on the clock. I'm trying to think what that is in kilometres. I'll have a quick glance at the speedometer. That's, uh, where are we? 70 is about 100, and, yeah, about 120 kilometres. Uh, 120,000 kilometres it has covered. Uh, sorry, me and numbers do not always go together well. So I'm really enjoying this. I'd never driven a Vauxhall Zafira before, um, but I think, you know, although I was tempted by a Zara Picasso uh, not that long ago, I think I'd be more inclined to go for a Zafira. So there we go. That was the Vauxhall Zafira A based on the Astra G, um, also known as a Holden Zafira, an Opal Zafira, or even in Australia as a Holden Zafira, I believe. Uh, yeah, I think that is, um, kind of peak family car i'm gonna say i know more modern cars will have better brakes and more airbags but uh, that is just a beautiful pure piece of design for my money and i like the wheel arches i just wheel arches i like the wheel trims i just like the color everything is perfect so nice to see one but isn't silver i will say as was nearer when silver was king but yeah a really interesting car i've been very pleased to drive it so thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe before you go or you can join hubnut at patreon.com or on the um, youtube itself look for the join button and find out what channel memberships are all about and uh, obviously the hubnut story somewhere you can go i'm not wearing a hubnut shirt i just realized but there are t-shirts mugs stickers all sorts available at hubnut.org so thank you for watching i shall see you in a future video Farewell. Well, that's a genuine first. Uh, driving along, there was a strange jangling noise. And then all of a sudden, there wasn't. There was a tinkling noise. And it was this bit of front spring uh, breaking free. Uh, I think it's been broken free for a while, maybe. Oh, no, it's the top end, isn't it? Or bottom end. So that snapped off. But the car is still sitting quite level, uh, which is quite surprising. But yeah, somewhere up there is a broken spring. I think I can see the break just there. So it's now sitting moderately lower on this side, but to drive, you wouldn't have a clue. Uh, this is an increasing problem. I don't know if it's an increasing problem everywhere in the world, but in the UK, springs don't seem to be made as good as they were.